Hello, George Romanic here. In my previous video, I introduced pressure as the vertical coordinate and we saw benefits of doing that. In the meantime, I uh, received between 0 to 1 million messages from you asking me, is it possible to generalize this approach and to use any variable as the vertical coordinate? In order to facilitate all these requests, I decided to make another video and today we will generalize this methodology and I will describe how, in principle, you can use any variable as the vertical coordinate, but this any comes with two asterisks. Let's see what these are. Let's say that some S is uh, any variable that can serve as independent variable instead of height. We saw in the previous video that that means that, for example, temperature, pressure, height, density, and so on, will depend on x, y in the horizontal direction, s in the vertical direction, and time t. When I say equal, I mean some function of these, will depend as function of these things. Now, in order for this s to be vertical coordinate, it has to be single valued and it has to be monotonic. Now, what does it mean single valued and what does it mean monotonic? Single valued means that this variable s has only one value at a given height. Monotonic means that the function is entirely non-increasing or non-decreasing. Let me demonstrate that. Let's say I have here s z. Here is height, in this case horizontally plotted, and here is this some variable s that we want to use as the vertical coordinate. Is this a good candidate? I claim it is, because at any height, let's say z0, I have only one value s0. And that means single valued function. What would be an example of non-single valued function, which is also called, by the way, multi-valued function. Well, this would be a good example of such function. Because notice that in this case, at this height, let's call it z1, I have multiple values of s associated with this height. What would be example of non-monotonic function. Well, let me show it here if I extend this axis. This would be a good example of non-monotonic function. We see that it is decreasing here with height, then it is increasing, so it is changing the sign with height. However, this one is single valued. So, in this case, only this black one is a good candidate because it is always increasing with the height and it is single valued as we demonstrated. Now I hope you can also see that the pressure that we used in the previous video was also good candidate because if I plot here height and here pressure, you will remember from my video on uh, barometric and hypsometric equations that pressure exponentially decreases with the height. And this is clearly single-valued function and it is also monotonic. Kindly remember that density, rho, has the same trend as pressure. Of course, the, in absolute terms, val values would not be the same, but the same decreasing trend. And uh, that means in principle, we could also use density as the vertical coordinate. And indeed, sometimes in oceanography, they use density as vertical coordinate. 
let me give you one example of a bad choice of this S. Let's say we want to use relative humidity, which we usually denote as U, as the vertical coordinate. Would that be a good choice? I think not, and this is why. Let's say this is the surface of the Earth, and here we have some nice cloud. Let's say stratus. Now, if I plot here height versus relative humidity. So how do I plot profile of U versus Z? Well, the easiest is actually to rotate Earth in this case and make this cloud appear like that. And now when I have Z like this and U like that, what the profile will look like. Well, at the surface, I will have some value of U and then it will, let's say, decrease with height, but then I will get into cloud and into cloud, it will go to 100%. And then as I leave cloud, it will again decrease and so on. Now I would like to mention that uh, profile below the cloud can dramatically be different from what I plotted here, but that's not the point. The point is to demonstrate that this is single valued, but this is not monotonic function because here it is decreasing and then it is increasing as we get into cloud, again decreasing as we leave the cloud and so on. So we can conclude that relative humidity would not be good option. Perhaps some of you are saying, okay, can you give us at least one more example of a good option for S? And I can say yes. There is one called sigma, and that is usually pressure as a function of x, y, z, and t, divided by pressure at the surface that is function of x, y, and t. This is called sigma coordinate, and some variation of this sigma coordinate is often used in numerical weather forecasting, but I will talk more about benefits of sigma coordinate, eta coordinate, and different coordinates that are all function of pressure in separate videos. Now, let's become more quantitative and derive the general rule for derivatives if we use the generic coordinate S. I will have a graph very similar from the graph that I had in previous video when I derived pressure as the vertical coordinate. So here I will have height Z, here I will have spatial coordinate X, and let's say this is the surface along which S is constant, isosurface of S. Let's take three points here point PA, here point PB, and here is point PC, which are pressures. So this will be delta X distance, and this will be distance delta Z. From this figure, we see that the pressure difference PC minus PA over delta x is equal pc minus pb over delta z times the slope of this s equal constant line, which is delta z over delta x, and plus pb minus pa over delta x. In previous video, you will recall, I also explained this expression using the multiple variable calculus and the chain rule. Now, what we need to do, we simply take limits of this expression by forcing delta x as well as delta z to go to zero. And this equation will become delta P over delta X at constant S, so along this, is equal delta P over delta Z at constant 
x delta z over delta x plus this over here just becomes delta p over delta x at constant z. So we have contribution along constant x and we have contribution along constant z to this gradient term. The same, of course, holds if we replace x by y, the second direction in the horizontal plane. And this over here is generalization of the pressure gradient term. If we use a variable s as the vertical coordinate and therefore independent variable. Previous video introduced pressure as the vertical coordinate. Today's video extends this idea beyond pressure and now you can see what you can use as the vertical coordinate and what you cannot use as the vertical coordinate at least following the approach that I describe here. Now you are full of knowledge. Until next video, goodbye.